Support for the show comes from Carolina Forward, a nonpartisan organization dedicated to building a more equitable, democratic, and prosperous North Carolina. You can learn more about their vision and values at carolinaforward.org. The North Carolina State Highway Patrol. What cigarette do you smoke, Doctor? A contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today. Rock and roll has got to go. And welcome back to the Hometown Holler. I'm Daniel Ayers. And I'm Quinn Ray. Well, hey, man. It is um, Lieutenant Governor Friday for oh, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. It is. Started this morning, um, went to attended... I don't. I don't want to say infiltrated. That sounds like devious and nefarious. <laughs> but I just. I attended a Mark Robinson rally. Bless um, you. I'm a glutton for punishment. You know, last or I guess now it's two months ago. That was in August, and now it's October. God, dude, we're getting so close. We are about thirty days out. Ugh. Um. Yeah, I went to that Trump rally, and so I thought, well, that wasn't clearly wasn't enough. So I have to go to a Mark Robinson rally now. <laughs> and I went to. Um, uh, he was, came to Hershey's Barbecue here in Alamance. Yep, here in Alamance County. I mean, it was right down the road for me. Yeah. Uh. It was. It was. Big crowd. Um, you would never know that he is um, mini soldier embattled in some of the most salacious <laughs> and just mind boggling scandals. I mean, I, I, it's like scandal almost doesn't do it justice, to be honest. They don't with give you. a shit. No, not at all. I mean, I, I, I zero shits. Yeah. Um, and I've spent the rest of the day trying to like process that experience. I mean, I could go on, but we have other things we need to talk yeah, about something today. More important. We have a lot more important. So we started with our, our uh, sitting Lieutenant governor this morning mm-hmm. and went through that uh, ordeal. Folks on social media have seen the posts that I've already done. Yep. Um, and we're ending the day with um, our next Lieutenant governor. I, I, so I we're, believe we're, so. we're looking to the future now. So we are honored on the holler to have, Senator Rachel Hunt with us today. Uh, Rachel Hunt has a pretty remarkable political career, flipped a state House seat from red to blue, um, currently sits in the state Senate, in the seat uh, held by friend of the holler, Jeff Jackson. That's right. Before Jeff went up to Washington, D.C. And now Senator Hunt is running to be our next lieutenant governor. But before we get super far into our interview, I just have to bring this up. Um, oh, Lord. We're related. Oh. What? And I, and I have the flow chart to prove it. <laughs> I would have believed you without the flesh. So um, for folks at home who are listening, you can't see this. I have a really detailed, <laughs> meticulously researched. Consul- Chicken scratch Sharpie. Yeah, exactly. This was a, not a fine point Sharpie, not extra fine. The fine point's enough. And my, um, I, I learned this from grandmother.com. I, my grandmother, I talked to her this morning, and she confirmed. So your father, Jim. Right. Uh, your grandfather, Jim's dad. Right. Uh, was cousins with my great-grandfather. Oh. First cousins. Wow. And so your dad and my grandmother are second cousins. Right. Uh, my family's in Pleasant Garden. This oh, is yeah. Kind of, yeah. Of That's actually, where we're from. Yeah, yeah my, my dad My dad actually my grew up on Hunt Road. Oh, my God. Incidentally. <laughs> and, uh, and he recalls, um, he, he remembers when it was paved because it was when your dad was elected governor. Wow. <laughs> your dad got elected governor and they paved Hunt Road. There so. you go. And, uh, and so you and I, incidentally... Our um, our third cousins once removed. How about that? Yeah. So, I love wow. it. Yeah. yeah. So I just had to sprinkle that at the start of the show. Connecting the dots. Yeah. It's a it's a nice. small world after all. And That's now great. she's running for lieutenant governor, which your dad took office when you were seven. <laughs> and and you're running for the office now. That's right. Wow. I know. So this is just a really cool. I mean, already this is a really cool episode. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, Senator Hunt, welcome to the hometown holler. We're Thank so glad you. we got yes. you here. We know it's busy out there on the campaign trail. Um, Quinn, you want to kick us off? Yeah. So. I guess instead of just giving the why are you running mm-hmm. right out the gate question, um, can you just tell us a little bit about Rachel? Sure. You, you know, like what, who is Rachel? <laughs> well, uh, I'm a senator, I'm a lawyer, I'm a mom, I'm a college counselor. Um, I'm a person who got into politics late in life. Um, I was in my 50s and um, waited till my kids were out of the house Mm -hmm. and had never planned to run. So I grew up with my father working, you know, 90 hours a week while while he was governor. So he missed, you know, most of the things in our childhood. So I said, I'm never doing that if I have children. Um, So I didn't, you know, I waited Mm -hmm. and, and did volunteer work in their schools the whole time they were little and 
you know, the college counseling thing mm-hmm. and all that. So, but then Trump was elected in 2016. Uh, that was like, you know, that, that just was <laughs> yes. very disturbing. Mm-hmm. That happened. Yes. <laughs> and and I was had been watching since 2010 the legislature basically destroy my dad's legacy mm-hmm. with public school funding. And so... I had also been telling people I wouldn't run every single year because my kids were at home. And once they left, you know, that that was no longer an excuse. (laughs) So, you know, it's a calling, I really think. And once you're in there, even though it's really difficult, especially being in the minority, in the super minority in the legislature, Mm -hmm. you feel like you're called to to do that kind of work. And you you were in the PTA, very active in the PTA. You worked on Lillian's List. Uh, You did a bunch of domestic violent Mm -hmm. um, you didn't do domestic violence, no, right. uh, but you, uh, as, as an attorney, you worked with a lot of mm-hmm. domestic violent cases right. and stuff. So um, it just kind of had a servitude background right. already. Well, didn't you also, um, if I remember correctly, I saw you stump about a year ago and you talked about working with a women's shelter. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. That was a really interesting detail that yeah. I did not know about. Yet. Yeah. So after high, after college, um, I did a year of volunteer work mm-hmm. um, and it was in a, it was a, being the resident manager of a battered women's shelter in Loudoun mm-hmm. County, Virginia. So I lived there. Um, I was also the person on the 24 hour hotline for, mm-hmm. for people to call in. Wow. So, you know, it was... <laughs> It was life changing in every sure. way. I mean, every way. Um, this is I'd never cell been phones. involved in anything like that. No, <clears throat> but living with the women and the children, um, it went, and it also doubled as the homeless shelter. So mm-hmm. it was just incredible. Yeah. Um, and after that, I was a different person because mm-hmm. it just changes you in that way. And I was determined to do things for people that needed help, especially women and children. So you decide to run for office mm-hmm. you know trump gets elected mm-hmm. and you, you're tired of what you're seeing in the north carolina general mm-hmm. assembly you flip a house seat mm-hmm. uh from blue to re- from red to blue right then he decides to come back for another <clears throat> round and right. you, you stump him even even more right um then you run for senate right what's leading you to lieutenant governor well it's been difficult to be in the legislature because of the status of the democrats mm-hmm. there um you know we haven't been able to get the things done we wanted to. We were able, you know, when I first got into the House, to stop a lot of bad bills. And by because, status, you mean just being in a, in a minority. Yeah, and, and super a minority. Super, a super minority, right, exactly, right. right. Mm-hmm. But, you know, 2019, we stopped the bad abortion bills. We stopped a lot of bad bills because we could uphold the veto. Um, since then, we haven't been able to do that. And I am just very attracted to having an executive as well as legislative role, which the lieutenant governor is the only person who has that. Mm. Um, I feel like I know enough about the legislature to be a good, you know, yeah. person to preside. But I'm also very interested in getting out around the state and interacting with people in North Carolina. That's really interesting because I, you know, I, I I know that the lieutenant governor, right, you know, presides in the Senate, but it's also an executive. I, like I've never heard somebody say it's kind of a hybrid role. Right. I mean, it is though. That's really that's yeah. a really interesting way to look at it. Yeah, it is one of the few roles in any of our levels of government where the branches kind of merge a little mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really interesting. And you get yeah. to sit, if uh, elected, you will be able to sit on, what, the State Board of Education? Right. Which is Community really cool. the College Board. You're the chair of the mm-hmm. Energy Policy Council. Yeah, it's a lot of interesting boards that mm-hmm. I'm very interested in serving on. Which one are you most excited about? Probably the State Board. Mm-hmm. I mean, education has been my focus mm-hmm. since I've been in the legislature. So, yeah. And we have so much work to do in state so much. <laughs> in, in public education to For try sure. to get it back on track. I would imagine that that is one of the issues you hear a lot about yes. on the campaign trail as I you're sure going do. across the state. Absolutely. What are what are folks telling you? Well, uh, about three weeks ago, we were in Jackson County, um, which you know now is basically destroyed mm-hmm. from the hurricane. Um, but I had two men come to my event and say, "We are here on our. We are here because we usually." volunteer in our kids' schools every lunch hour Wow! because we don't have any li- lunchroom ladies. Whoa. We don't have people to serve food to our children. These are two men, two dads. Yeah. And they said, you know, people are going in mass to the school board meetings mm-hmm. to demand more money. And, of course, the school boards are not the people with the money in this state, but people don't know that. Right, right. And 60% of the money is supposed to come from the legislature. But nobody knows that. So what we need to do in North Carolina, I think, is educate people about Mm -hmm. the legislature, what we do, why we're important, why we're more important to you than Congress, 
And, you know, what kinds of things do you need to have in your representative or your senator so that they are serving your family? Mm -hmm. I mean, we see that here in Alamance County, folks, you know, because school funding is a huge yes. issue. You know, we, we mold in our schools and all oh. that. And a lot of folks want to take um, their their concerns, valid concerns, right, but you know, to the school board. Right. And, and the, the school board is a place to, to voice concerns. But when it comes to the power of the purse, right, right. right. Um, that's, that's, a uh, those questions in many cases are, are answered in Raleigh or, or for the county commissioners. Yeah. Right. But the, 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 county offices, um, I think they're being stretched pretty heavily because the state's sure. not holding up yes. their end of the right. deal. Right. Well, we heard about that with Wesley Harris, that's right? right. He was that's talking right. about, yeah, I mean, in, 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 um, the, the counties are oftentimes kind of left to pick up the tag, the tab, I should say, mm -hmm. or they're, they're the ones being squeezed right now. So yeah, really, what, what are some other um, you know, education's one big issue. Right. What are the other issues you're hearing? Well, you know, women's reproductive health care rights. Mm -hmm. People are very, very concerned about that, and they should be. Um, we know if certain people get elected, my um, opponent, for one, Hal Weatherman, uh, wants to take it all the way back to conception. Mm -hmm. I just saw that video recently yep. of him. I guess he was at a church somewhere yep. and, and just literally saying, take yep. it back to conception, which. How do you even do that? I, I, yeah, I mean, it just, I, I don't know what to say aside from just, just that is a, a road to so many unforeseen consequences and, and upending people's lives. So, so how is, uh, as Lieutenant Governor, how can you help with these issues that people are bringing to you on the campaign trail? Well, you can take it to the legislature for one thing, but you can also make sure people, you know, you can be the bully pulpit and make sure people understand what's mm. happening in Raleigh, what they can do to change things in Raleigh, and um, spread the news about what's, what the truth is about things. Like what, the, like what you just said, yeah. take it all the way back to conception. What would that look like? What would right. that do to people's lives? Yeah, because I've always thought, you know, um, you know, Lieutenant Governor is the vice president to right. the president. Yeah, that's right. exactly um, right. Yeah. And that was just like, Okay, that's it's second governor. Yeah. Um, but there's so much more responsibility right. that you, right. you can do and, and empower you can have. Right. So what? Let's say uh, this election cycle, you get elected mm -hmm. and the supermajority is uh, is disbanded. Mm -hmm. There's still the majority. We get right. uh, Stein in office, and there there he's got veto power. What can? How does that change your life if you're elected? Well, I would be working very closely with the Senate with the senators to make sure we can uphold that veto. Um, if that's the one chamber that's broken, or maybe both of them mm -hmm. sure. are become just minority. Um, or with the House, because I know people in both chambers since I've worked in both. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I would also be doing whatever else the governor needs. I mean, lieutenant governors can serve on more boards. They can be the heads of departments if the governor needs that. And he is now able to leave the state or the country and do, you know, go get Be companies to governor. move here. Yeah. Yes, do mm -hmm. all the things governors are supposed to do. Right. Uh, because you, you've seen what Roy Cooper has had to deal with. And, mm -hmm. and, if, and if Hal Weatherman becomes a lieutenant governor, it will be the same situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, for folks listening who, who maybe need some context on that, whenever the governor leaves the state, the lieutenant governor assumes the office, right? Assumes the kind of fills in, right? right? And that has been um, a liability for, yes. for our current Be governor. Because then the majority could pass a bill, mm -hmm. right. and then the lieutenant governor could sign it instantly. Bill. Even if there is veto power available, mm -hmm. it, he wouldn't if it was the opposite party. And again, you have you have somebody like Mark Robinson, current lieutenant governor, or somebody like Hal Weatherman who wants to be, and they say, you know, okay, we could pass, pass an abortion bill right now that gives no exceptions, goes back to conception. You can't leave town if you're. Right. The, I mean, there's just no. And, and you and there are important things the governor has to do out of state. Right. Yeah. I'm, so I'm teaching a civics class right now, oh, great. and I'm really curious because this is something I have I've like scoured the internet for, and I think I've asked a couple guests, but I'm still not really sure. And I think you're the perfect person to ask because you have experience in the state house. Oh, I'm excited. And the state senate. What is the difference between those two jobs, and like like on like a day to day basis? Is there a huge difference, or are they kind of similar, like different titles but right. similar flavor? Well, yes, but one is like three times the amount yeah. of number of people. Mm -hmm. um, you know the the gravity of your position. Sure, districts are bigger. Districts are three times. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, three times bigger. So, the Senate does things very differently than the House. Okay. The House has so many people and mm -hmm. everybody wants to talk and most people are given the ability to talk. Mm -hmm. The Senate is run, you know, very strictly. 
you know, you don't have 20 people standing up to talk about somebody's anniversary or somebody's <laughs> birthday. Right. In the house, every single day, you have 30 people stand up and talk about their kids' soccer game. I mean, it's God, unbelievable. For the record. Yes. <laughs> and so the Senate is a very different animal. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it, people are, it's just a more somber, mm-hmm. you know, and serious mm-hmm place that kind of tracks yeah yeah it makes Mm -hmm. sense yeah Mm -hmm. man i guess that's just you know that's just another you know tally mark because i'm assuming um heavily here and i think i'm leaning on the 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 right correct assumption if your opponent was sitting in the seat he couldn't tell us the difference between Mm -hmm. the two uh, about that well he could tell us how madison cawthorn likes his coffee (laughs) (laughs) which in some circles that is a very important little political factoid yeah well and let me also add before my house folks get on me um very important work gets done in the sure. house there are some incredibly smart people there there's just a lot of some there are also a lot of people who want to hear themselves no talk. i mean what, what i mean no, what, what you said <laughs> they're elected officials i know <laughs> that I seems know. very i mean that makes sense to me I mean, yeah. it seems very intuitive and, and what you said about kind of the the scale of the work right like these t- districts are larger more constituents right. that's going to lead to more emails more phone calls right. more things happening that you know you're you're the uh, the buck stops with you, right? So that makes a lot of sense. Thank you for for sure. uh, for Happy enlightening me there. Um, so you've been on the campaign trail, you've been going around the state, kind of getting a sense of of what's important to people, what people are voting on this year. And I didn't allude to this in the intro, par- partly because I think it's something a lot of people already know, but I also like this interview and this conversation, this campaign is about you, right? And and obviously your, your father, uh, Governor Jim Hunt, you know, he was, a, he's a very important figure in the history of North Carolina politics. Um, one thing I'm curious about is how would you say, well, I guess let me, let me give some more context to the question. Growing up in a, in a family that was really involved in North Carolina politics, mm-hmm. um, North Carolina politics has been a big part of your life. And I'm curious, how have you seen it change? Well, just the polar, polarization of mm-hmm. folks. Um, you know, Dad was lieutenant governor to a Republican governor, Jim mm-hmm. Holzhauser. They were able to work together to start public kindergarten. And, and Jim Holzhauser could leave the state Ab- and not yeah. worry about Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So there was just a, it was a, the Republican Party was very different then. I mean, mm-hmm. even up through, you know, President Bush, sure. he and my dad worked together on things. So we're just dealing with a different group of people now. And... It's just unfortunate because it's, you know, we need to have a healthy two-party system, Mm -hmm. but we need one of the parties to not be following everything that somebody like Donald Trump does Mm -hmm. and says. Okay, that that is perfectly, like, maps on to, like, I was really uncomfortable this morning in, in this, the Mark Robinson rally, and I was like, why am I uncomfortable here? And at first I was like, oh, it's because there's a lot of people around me who maybe I have different opinions from. But that actually wasn't it, mm-hmm. right? Like, I, lo- I love living in a society where people have really different opinions right. from mine. Like, I don't want to live in a place where I walk into a room and I know people in here agree with me. Right. Or everybody agrees with me. But what it was was, like, I I felt as if I was in, like, a different reality. Mm-hmm. It was like things were being said that I was, like, just not – it's not like, well, I disagree with that, but, like, that's just not true. Right. Right. Like, I mean, in, in the current context, a lot of skepticism around and mis- dis- not going to say misinformation, disinformation around what's happening in Western North Carolina. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, this is not Republican or Democrat. Like, this is just lying. Right. And it's making life worse for many, many people. Right. Especially Republicans. Yep. Because that part of the state is predominantly, I mean, a lot, a lot of red voters up there. Sure. So yeah. I, what you're saying that. It resonates with me. Yes. It really does. Yeah. yeah. So when you were campaigning though in you know 2018 and stuff, it, you you didn't just win because you got Democrat votes. Oh no. Um. And you know I, I was reading a, an, I think it was the Assembly article about you and that uh, you know people will say you know you won because your dad and you're like no not right. my name you know I connected to unaffiliated voters yep. I connected to Republican voters yep. so you have a track record of being able to reach across the aisle right. and and work with everybody so. Has that even shifted some from mm-hmm. knocking on doors in 2018 to speaking to somebody who has conservative values mm-hmm. to now? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I see it with me just, you know, I, I ran um, for office. I'm, I'm in my second term mm-hmm. just locally. Right. And Daniel and I, we went and knocked on doors. And it uh, instead of just <laughs> pulling from Boat Builder, uh-huh. all the left-leaning people, mm-hmm. like we're like, we're going to go knock every and door. You just picked a neighborhood. Um, door right. to door. We're going to go door to door. Right. And it was very um eye-opening to people because yes. like, you instantly knew 
and they knew where we stood. Mm -hmm. But then once you just start talking to them, we we share a lot of the same values. So how has that been on the campaign trail for you? Have you been able to speak to people who initially, like Democrats are going to kill all the babies and you're Mm -hmm. letting illegals Mm -hmm. in. Have you been able to get through to some people? Well, certainly to some people. We, you know, since we're doing a statewide race, we haven't done the door to door as much as obviously Mm -hmm. in the past. Um, But, you know, certainly unaffiliated folks. I mean, we are talking about extremism on one side and rationality on the other side. Mm -hmm. It's not Democrat and Republican. It's just, you know, civilized, rational, Mm hardworking, middle of the road person, which is what I am Mm -hmm. as a moderate Democrat and someone who wants to do the most extreme things to people in the state that anybody's ever done. Right. And very few people really want to take that that route. Um, certainly there's about 30% that are true Trumpers and they are believers in people like Hal Weatherman. But, sure. you know, most people want women to have healthy, successful lives, want their daughters or you know, families to have daycare. I'm talking, I talk a ton about mm-hmm. daycare on the, on the trail and want their kids to have successful schooling so they can get jobs. Yeah. Who doesn't want that? I mean, right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not democratic. It's right. just, I mean, it's not a democratic thing. It's, it's not a partisan a thing. Normal right. thing. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. it's, it's just something everybody wants. So that's what I found. Yeah. Um, so uh, th- this might be, uh, you know, a, a question that, that I'm very curious about. So a, a few weeks ago, I mean, from, from my understanding, you know, I, I saw Hal put out a thing saying, you know, my opponent doesn't want to debate me. And <laughs> that's not the case. It was pretty much like Carolina Journal just came mm-hmm. out and said they're going to have a debate, but didn't even send you an invitation. Would Do you, do you want to respond to any of this yeah, nonsense? That was unfortunate. We never came to any agreement at all about a debate. I was just informed by people that read their newspapers, like my parents, that I was debating. And I said, what? Right. Yes. So somebody just asked you, oh, you ready for the debate? And you're like, what debate? I know. Yeah. So they called several rural newspapers and told them about it. All made up. Oh, so this is strategic. Yeah, it's all strategic. Mm -hmm. So I had to be on the defense. This was not a good faith error of miscommunication. Yeah, no, this was. Not at mm -hmm. all. Not at all. See, and, and, and that's why we need people like you elected. We need good faith, good government people in office that are just normal right? and, and, and just want common sense right. to, to, to move forward. Yeah, I agree. When you talk to like undecided or unaffiliated voters, mm-hmm. I mean, I had this as a question, you kind of answered it, but just, just to make sure I get what you're saying, the argument, you, you meet somebody who is undecided. Right. And I, I say that, I'm like, who could be I know. undecided? But, I know. But, but you meet people who are undecided. Yeah. right. And and is that you the, kind of the, the best practices pitch, right? Which is like, okay, you're undecided. Well, the choice is extremism right. or moderation and rationality, right? Or, or is there another uh, route you travel? Or, I mean, is, is that is that the pitch, or is there another pitch? Well, it depends on what I am getting from sure. the person. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I always like to t- ask people questions. Mm-hmm. That's what I always did on the doors. Sure. I didn't just give them a spiel. Meet them where they are. Meet them where they are. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so, once I find out what these this person's interested in. I will talk about that issue if yeah. I think it's going to be important mm-hmm. to them. You know, climate change needs to be talked about right now right. over and over and over. We just saw that New York Times article about how bad our building codes are, mm-hmm. how many lives could have been saved from this yeah. hurricane if we had had stronger standards. And we in the legislature have, are responsible for make you know for changing those standards for the worse. And mm-hmm. we, you know, have got to do something about that. That's right. Everybody. And this is not going to stop. You know, we're not, we're going to have more hurricanes. We're going to have more flooding. We're going to have more pandemics. We have got to come together as a state and make good decisions for our people. Yeah. Unfortunately, North Carolina doesn't have nukes to nuke hurricanes. Yeah. We're working on that. That's, I think that's part of somebody. There's, I'm sure there's a platform out there. Some far, like, let's get a North, North Carolina gets oh, a nuclear no. program oh. with, with anti-hurricane uh, goals. Um, you know, your, your story, um, I think it could inspire a lot of people who, who've never thought about getting into politics to get into politics. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm curious, you know, what would you tell somebody who might be listening to this who is interested in getting involved in a, in a, in a big way, like maybe mm-hmm. even running for office? Mm-hmm. What would that person need to know? Well, first of all, you need to have a lot of time mm-hmm. to do it well. You need to not be afraid to raise money 
And that mm. means putting yourself out there. That's like the hardest thing I think it's for very people. Hard. It's just like asking people for money. Yes. Because it's so taboo in yes. our society. Yes. And it's, you know, you feel very embarrassed at first, mm -hmm. but you've got to find a way through that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, my first campaign, 2018, from nine to three, every day I was on the phone. Mm -hmm. Most people hung up on me because they'd never heard of me. Um, but that's how much work it took to raise the money for that campaign. Wow. And then from four to seven, I was on the doors by myself mm -hmm. because in those days wow. it was safer than now. For how, how, how long did that last, that, that schedule, that regimen? Uh, we started in a, I, I guess we started in April that mm -hmm. year. I don't think anybody is going to be uh, listening to this and going, I'm going to do it now. I know. I'm, I'm sorry that. if I'm scaring no, I mean, you. But you know what? The ones who do, they'll yeah. be in it for the right reasons. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it, is right. a, it is a selective, and I think it's like that for a reason, yeah. right? You, yeah. you, you got to weed people out. Right. Um, yeah. But, you know, the, the, and I think you would agree with this. You know, we've got to figure out a way to represent all the people yes. for doing it so mm -hmm. people to have the sure time there are there are certainly little... issues of equity and access sure. right but i guess what i'm saying is like you know it, it we whatever whatever the system is right even if we had public financing of campaigns and mm -hmm. you didn't have to raise money it, you know it, it's good to have a system that encourages people to really apply themselves yeah and and well and then examples like uh, senator hunt here mm -hmm. right you know coming in being a mom being a PTA parent, mm -hmm. you know, the one you're beside at all these festivals, the spring fling that you're mm -hmm. doing, and then deciding to run for office mm -hmm. yeah. and and winning, right? right. Like mm -hmm. flipping a seat. And so, and now running for l lieutenant governor. So you're an example that if you show up, mm -hmm. you put in the work, you can do it. Right. And you also got to have the values, right? right. You've got to be able sure. to have the, the values that connect with people. And sure. I think you do that uh, very well. And Thank you. I'm, I'm excited about uh, what this November is going to hold yes, for you. I'm sure you, the anxiety is uh, traveling it's higher. Stretch. I'm sure Boo has gotten anxiety I as know. well. Well, we're too tired to have anxiety. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing, though, about yeah. equity. Mm -hmm. uh, if we had better pay in the legislature, mm -hmm. that would go a long way to getting yes. people that are unable right now to run. Yeah, you know, so we, um, and I'm sure you get the question, when, when, just for city council, our local newspaper, mm -hmm. they always gives up these questions and they was like, yes or no. It's like, would you vote on a raise for a council member? Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of nuance involved in that. Right. But how do you pitch that mm -hmm. to taxpayers mm -hmm. that are like, we want to pay ourselves more? Who And they already think we're all scumbags. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you know, so how, how do you yeah. work? How do you get that? motive through well yeah. i also think there's an assumption i don't think most people know right. that the pay is so that's low right. to begin with so i think it's like well they just they're already making six figures and that's not they mm -hmm. want to make seven figures mm -hmm. right like i don't think people know it's like thirteen thousand or fourteen right. thousand with a hundred dollar right. per diem or something that's so. right i mean you have to pay to work there yeah i'm at literally paying yeah. to work there wow yeah and there are only so many people that can do that and you can only do that for so long right mm -hmm. right so that's has, unfortunate. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm sure like it is just political kryptonite to put to, to be the one to file that bill that says, let's pay ourselves 70 K a year or whatever it is. But I'm sure those conversations happen at some mm -hmm. point in the hallways. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. just cause it's a, it's a grind and it, like you said, sure. you're paying to be there and yeah. that's not sustainable for many folks. Right. Have, has anybody ever suggested, I'm sure they have like means testing, mm -hmm. right? Like some of us need this money. Some of right. us, you know, and then some of us are retired and have, you know, multiple homes right. and many, many, many millions of dollars. And like, I, I think it's fair to say that there are some folks who need that pay increase more than others. And I right. think that's a much easier sell mm -hmm. to constituents. Right? We're not all getting a raise. Mm -hmm. has, is that something that has been? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, that of seems to be no, like such low not. hanging fruit. But right. Maybe that's yeah. okay. Well, yeah. when I get to run. Okay. Oh, there yeah. That, that, that's there what it is. <laughs> so. We're, we're coming up on time here, uh, Senator. What do you want to leave the listeners with? You're you're going to be on the ballot. Yep. Your name is going to be right beside Weatherman's. Mm -hmm. And why do they need to choose you? Well, I want to make North Carolina the best place to live, work, and raise a family. And I want it to be that way for every North Carolinian. So we've got to take care of our people. And we've got to have people in office for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. And the right reasons are because we care about the lives of our constituents, and we want them to be better. Right now, we are not making the lives of our children in public schools better. We're not making the lives of the people who work in public schools better. We're not making the lives of people who need childcare better. And now with the hurricane, we've got a whole mm. new set of issues, mm. and people are hurting 
so much in North Carolina. So we've got so much work to do. Do you want someone who cares about people in North Carolina and will do anything mm -hmm. that I can possibly do to make people's lives better or someone who is an extremist? Yeah, and I, I'm glad you brought up the hurricane because that is the next administration federally and statewide that that's still going to be absolutely on the to-do list that's right. right i mean you know the, the i know the, the biden harris administration just approved um funding for the next six months 100 right. uh, mm -hmm. of what governor cooper requested they granted right and somebody commented on our social media and they made a good point like well that's that's awesome that's great but what happens at seven months because this is going right. to be right. a multi and and, and and my response to that is we decide what happens in seven months in a month in that's November right. because that's who right. we have in power yep. in 2025 is going to be, that's going to decide everything that's when right. it comes well, to disaster response. That's, yeah. a, that's a good question to lead into then real quick. What can North Carolina do and what is North Carolina doing right now for the people in Western North Carolina? Well, we're providing whatever aid we can. We're helping FEMA get there. They have to be there first. And this Wednesday, we're coming back to the legislature to waive um, certain requirements that allow DHHS and mm -hmm. some other agencies to, do emergency response. Um, and then we're going to have to step in and have our aid, the aid that we need to, you know, supplement what FEMA's doing. I mean, mm -hmm. there's going to have to be a huge amount of help from the state and the federal government. And we're going to need to do things like, you know, step in and help people with mental health issues because yeah. this isn't just going to be, you know, your physical problems. Right, it's going to sure. be all kinds of issues. And children are not having school now. What are they mm. going to do? Mm. We're going to do another COVID you right. know, situation. Yeah. Well, nobody has internet. Right. I mean, it's, it's just so incredibly bad that we need people who are visionaries mm -hmm. and who have ideas of how we're going to help everybody. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have those people, then our people are really going to suffer. And we can't have that. I really appreciate you bringing up the mental health because until now, I didn't really think about oh, that. Man. I was just thinking about people. I mean, I know people are losing their minds right, right. now. Quick, but quick anecdote. So I just, I, last night I talked to a friend who was in Swannanoa right. and, and had been, and got, got out, um, but, but not in time, right. Was there for like five or six days mm -hmm. and, and got home, I guess, Tuesday, okay. um, Tuesday or Wednesday. And I was just like, tell me about it. Oh. And just trauma. Just like, I mean, yeah. just, just, just mm. absolutely right. just like, I mean, I mean, and, and she, they're processing it really well, but it just, it opened my eyes to just beyond the material catastrophe, right. the physical, the lives lost, the psychological trauma sure. of an yeah. entire region. So I, I like Quinn, I really appreciate you highlighting absolutely. that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So does North Carolina have like a, a purse for disasters or is this mm -hmm. just in the general fund balance? Cause we have one of the largest general fund balances we, do. we had. So is that just where you're going to take the money yeah. from? Mm -hmm. There's not just something sitting like FEMA for North no, Carolina. No, we, we will um, come back and vote on that and okay. get some money from the general fund. And that is that that's the rainy day fund, as people call right. it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, cool. cool, cool. And, and I'm going to assume that's not going to be too terrible of a discussion. I mean, I, I would think right. everybody's going to be on board. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that's Nobody's filibustering the... Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> awesome. Well... I think that that about wraps it up. Are, is, uh, I'm looking, making sure I'm not I'm not speaking yeah. out of turn no, here. No, I, th I think that's that's it. Um, we'd be remiss though. Uh, where can people find more about you? Oh, well, that would be great. Um, my website for my campaign is rachelhunt.com. Um, there's a lot of resources on that, um, and of course, you can always find me with my Senate, which is rachel.hunt at nc l o l n c l e g dot gov. Sorry. So they can keep up I don't with usually you. use that one. <laughs> I was just saying, so folks can, can keep up with your campaign, but also what you're doing in Raleigh right, right. As, as a legislator. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, for every guest, we try to hunt down <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's the pun. A, a special gift. Oh. Uh, and so um, we are uh, going to send you home with a Hometown Holler t-shirt, oh, nice. which is like, okay, that's cool. T-shirts are great. But this one is really special. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's uh, It's... What? It is special. <laughs> I know your cartoon voice was cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, you got to hear my goofy voice or my Mickey Mouse. We'll do that on the back porch sometime. But um, no, so the t-shirts the we, we have are from TS Designs, which is an Alamance County uh, apparel company. Nice. And all the cotton is um, from a local state supply chain, like a Carolina, mm. South North South Carolina. It's like a 700-mile supply chain as opposed to like the average t-shirt is, is like 20,000, 30,000 miles. Right. So we tell people this is Carolina cotton from dirt to shirt. 
I love it. And uh, every time I say that, I smile because it's. I love. <laughs> I love. A, I love it when something snappy like that. And they're really comfy. They're ethically made, and and it's cool to give some something to somebody that represents us and our values and Alamance County. So we're excited to, to send you home with a nice. T-shirt, Senator Hunt. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, yeah, thank you thank for having you. me. This, this is was awesome. Really fun. Thank I you. I appreciate it.